Welcome back. Have you ever had an idea and then you thought to yourself, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I'm too old to do that. Oh, I'm too busy to do that. Don't think that way anymore. I've got someone here who's going to talk about how making your ideas into reality is going to sound simple when you hear it from her. <laughs> Judy Whitmore is a manifester. That's the only word I can use besides girlfriend. She is a super manifester who has amazing ideas and then turns them into reality. So Judy, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm and glad to be here and sharing with our audience and our viewers about the amazing life that you're living through your own admission of what? Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out, yes. So yes. let's talk about that. Well, I, I recently heard about a, a teenage malady called FOMO, fear of missing out, and I thought to myself, well, I know all about that because I had that when I was 30 a very long time ago. And um, I, whatever I was doing in life, I always had this feeling that there was something more. There was something, something I more I need to learn about myself and I always wanted to um, sort of stretch myself a little bit more, see how far I could take it. So and no fear. No fear, just the vision of moving forward? No, I have no fear because I'm very lucky for my inspiration. I had a grandmother who walked from Russia to Amsterdam to come to America. So whenever I had to do anything very difficult in my life, I always thought to myself, well, at least I don't have to walk from Russia to Amsterdam. Wow. So things, that's a pretty good visual. Right. <laughs> so. so what I know, I mean, we met a number of years ago in an accomplishment group. Yes. And we were all there because we wanted to do things. Exactly. But I think you kind of took it exponentially and just added on a million things. I, I sort of ran with that. I remember that in our accomplishment group. I was there because I wanted to finish my novel, come fly with me and have it published. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very, I was going to say I was very lucky, but it actually took a lot of hard work yeah. too, that um, I did finish the novel and it was published in 2013 and it became, a, it became an Amazon number one bestseller. That's amazing. So this is Judy's number one bestseller, Come Fly With Me, which I've read. I've got it on my, um, on my Kindle. And it was airplane reading for a long time, which was appropriate because <laughs> yes. we were flying across right. the country together. And it turned out to be just way more than you expected. It, it really, um, it was more than I expected. And it was very rewarding. And, uh, and one of the reasons I wanted to write that book is because I am a jet pilot and I wanted to, I know so many people are afraid of flying uh -huh. and I wanted to present a story where, um, where flying was almost one of the characters yeah. and that people could in a way sort of fall in love with flying and how much fun it can be mm -hmm. and how exciting it can be and it doesn't have to be fearful. So in the spirit of full disclosure, I had a boyfriend who was getting his private pilot's license and he wanted me to be his navigator. And every time we'd go up, I would get sick. He'd have to land, drop me oh. off at a local airport, <laughs> come back and get me later yes. and fly me home. That was the end of my flying dreams. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Remind me not to fly with you. Yeah, well, that, but I, exactly. But now I've learned. I come prepared. So okay. I've always got my baggies and hands. Yes. <laughs> I'm all ready for anything. But you have also published, I mean, let's just, I, this is my list of, of how I think of you. you you are a, um, a stage producer, a screenwriter, a pilot, a clinical psychologist, um, a mom, a wife, a grandma, a daughter. It, you, it, the list goes on. I, I keep very busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, no moss is growing under your feet, as they no, say. No. And my favorite is the cookbook that I actually have on my shelf, one of the original copies, which is so exciting, because this also, for me, is kind of a it's kind of a review of your life. It's a review of my life in the sense that I had this drawer full of recipes like everybody does. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I really treasure them because they're in my grandmother's handwriting. And I thought to myself, I don't want to lose those recipes. So what I decided to do was I would do a small cookbook with her recipes. Mm -hmm. And then it evolved into this book, which is all the recipes that I've asked my friends for over the years. I would say, oh, that's so delicious. Can I get that recipe? And of course, they would very graciously give it to me. So in the book are all the recipes my friends have given me, along with a photograph of that person and a little story about them. And it's so beautiful. And that's what really triggered my reaching out to you to say, 
I know a lot of people want to do that. I know yeah. plenty of people, like I have the box of recipe cards yeah. in my grandmother's handwriting that I would take a picture of the card and put it in a book and then write about it, the story that goes with it. And you actually did it. And I thought, what an inspiration that would be. Well, these are these these books are actually published by, by Smith Terrace um, Publishing, but you can do that yourself on Shutterfly. You don't need to go through a whole uh, a whole rigmarole like this. Mm -hmm. You can get on Shutterfly and you can upload you can upload the recipes, you can upload photographs and stories and come out with a really beautiful beautiful yeah. book. And I'm not being paid by Shutterfly. No, but, I have but, <laughs> but my brother uses it a lot for all of his family photo albums and yeah. they make great books and so it's very easy to do it. It's a great idea. And yeah. that was just an initial inspiration. And then I started looking at all the rest of the things you were doing and said, I know so many of us would be doing what Judy's doing if we actually had given it that kind of thought. Like, we've got all kinds of ideas, like gumballs. Yes. And then as they yes. roll out. That's a great analogy. Why not just yeah. create them? Well, one of the, one of the reasons that these books are in existence is because I had wanted to write my whole life. I was very busy doing other things. I had been a theater producer, I'd been a pilot, I had you know raised my kids. And uh, then I went back to school and I became a therapist. Mm -hmm. But that feeling of always wanting to be a writer never left. And finally, when I turned 55, I thought, holy cow, I have to either stop telling people I'm going to write a book or I have to do it. And so I terminated my therapy practice and wow. I enrolled in writing classes at UC Irvine. Good for you. And, and the first class I took was called how to start your novel because I knew that I had a story but I had no clue how to do it. I, to me writing a book was it would be synonymous with uh, building a spaceship that can go to Mars. I didn't know anything anything about it and taking that class really took the mystery out of it because writing a book it, well, if you boil it down to its essence, it's basically sit in front of your computer for eight hours a day and don't get up. It really is. Yes. It really is. And I know that when I wrote my book, it was shortly after 9-11, and I had nothing but time. Yeah. And that was the, I could just sequester myself and feel good about it. Otherwise, there's so much going on. You have yeah. to get rid of the noise. And in the meantime, you've also done something on a lighter note. Yes. So tell us about Romeo and Juliet. Well, I, I could never get my children interested in Shakespeare. So they just, they just wouldn't have it. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, well, yes, you know, those Elizabethan costumes and language, they're, they they're can be daunting. Intimidating. So I had this idea. And I said, asked my husband if he would do this with me. And we created this book. It was called Romeo and Juliet Imagined. And it's Romeo, it's Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. It's the story, but it's done in comic book form and the language is updated. How so it's, fun. hey dude, have you seen the Montagues? Oh, it, it, just I just something like a show, teenager would. I'm just gonna show, I know some of these are loose inside, but I just wanna show, show our viewers what the inside of a uh, reimagined medieval yes. uh, story time would look like. So it's it's different bedtime reading than usual. It's it's different bedtime reading, and, and I'm very pleased because um, it, because it looks like some schools are using it now too. So that's very that's rewarding. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm so glad that you were able to come visit us in between all your projects oh. and share with our viewers. And I'll look forward to seeing what comes next because with you, well, you are doing. You've done a one-woman show. You're back to performing. I, Is I there someplace I can see you? I had well, I had been a performer when I was very young, and uh, about five years ago, started singing with a trio, mm -hmm. and uh, we we played in New York. We did a show at the Orange County Performing Arts Center a couple years I ago. I saw that one. And um, we, actually went, we actually sang at Carnegie Hall in New York. Fabulous. And um, I just did my very first solo show at Patello's in Studio City, and it was lots of fun. And so I'm just getting ready right now to start working on a new show with my brother, who is part of the trio that I sing with. Very fun. So if people want to follow you or they want more information, they want to find you if you're performing, how would they do that? Uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, uh, I think my Facebook page is Judith, I think it's just Judith Whitmore, okay. but um, also I have a, uh, I have a website, it's judithwhitmore.com and you can read about the books and the singing and Perfect. everything We'll put else. that up on the screen so people can follow. Great. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Lauren. My pleasure. And we'll be right back.